Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. Today I'm going to be sewing along with you one of the three boo bags by Catsiopia Patterns. I did the medium size one. This is the Luna. There are two others. One's called Estrella and one is called Tierra. The Estrella is a large backpack style. The Tierra is a small coin purse style. This is the medium size one that can be the best of all worlds. I chose to make this one as a crossbody strap closure. You can also do it with uh, backpack straps. I do show you in the tutorial how to know the placement of where to put that webbing if you decide to do that. Um, lots of options in the pattern for this. You could also put in a slip pocket on the back and a zipper pocket if you wanted to. Um, I just wanted to keep it simple. I think she is adorable scentful. On the inside, again, it's a double zipper closure. On the inside, I have a slip pocket and a zipper pocket. This is a drop-in lining. If you have a free arm or a cylinder arm, you will be doing it just like how I do in this video when it comes to finishing. If you only have a, if you don't have either of those and you have just the flatbed, make sure when it comes to actually putting the two together, the outside and the inside, that you do it as per her pattern, as it's kind of opposite than how I do it. She does it with the lining on the outside, whereas I just do mine as a drop-in lining because I do finish it on my cylinder arm. Um, such a cute bag. Uh, what else do I need to tell you about this bag? This is Rex Faux Leather from Emma Line Bags. Um, I use Giardini edge paint to edge paint around my ghost eyes. My hardware is from Emmeline Bags. My zipper and zipper pulls are from RC Threadcraft. You can see them, they're like little, oh, I don't know if you can see them. They're little ghosts, there we go. Um, and my lining, I don't know. It was just something I picked up at Fabricland. I don't know what it's called. Anyways, how about we get, oh, there is, I use Pellon foam in this one. The reason I didn't use my so pink foam is because with this being white and it's kind of more of a tramp, like you can kind of see through it. Um, so I used the leftovers of what I had of Pellon flex foam as it was the same color. All of my cotton pieces are backed with EB Fuse Light from Emma Line Bags. And besides that, I think that's all there is to know about this bag. So let's get to making it. You are going to need some number five zipper tape, three number five zipper pulls, a slider, two swivel clasps, and two D-rings, as well as your nameplate. For cut pieces, you are going to need uh, two exterior and two lining zipper panels. I've already backed my uh, main panels with foam. You're going to need uh, one exterior bottom and one exterior lining piece, two exterior side pieces and two lining pieces, two exterior main panels and two lining main panels, your zipper pocket piece and your slip pocket piece from the inside of the bag, two connector pieces, and your crossbody strap. You're also going to need two eyeballs. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do my crossbody strap off camera. If you need a class on how to do that, that is down below in the description. Okay, so for your eyeball placement, you're going to use your pattern piece and a pen that you can wipe away. And I've cut the little circle out of my pattern piece and I'm just tracing it onto my front panel. Now for my eyes, I have also gone ahead and edge coated around the raw edges. I'm going to use a little bit of double sided tape, making sure I am keeping them out of the top stitch seam allowance. And I am going to stick it into the middle of the back side of the eyes and then stick them in place on the front of the bag. So now we are going to top stitch these in place. I am pulling my threads long and I'm not back stitching because I want to have a nice continuous line. 
Now, because these are so small and so round, I found it a lot easier just to hand crank the stitches around. That way I had a little more control over where the stitches were going and my machine being an industrial sometimes gets away from me and when it's something small like this you definitely want to make sure your detail is good. So right now I am pulling my um, starting bobbin thread to pull my starting top thread through and as I come to the um, end I'm making sure I am ending in that same starting stitch hole Again, pulling my ending thread bobbin thread up so I can pull my top thread through. Tie these four strands off in three or four knots. I also like to burn mine with a uh, lighter just because I'm using a bonded thread. It just helps uh, create a little bit more of a knot so I know that they will not be uh, coming unraveled later. And then you go ahead and do the exact same thing with the other eye. Okay, so that's done. I went ahead and I installed my nameplate as well. Now for the back piece, I am not making mine into a backpack, but I want to show you how the placement would work. So you would just use your pattern piece like so, make your marks on the top and the bottom for your strap placement. And then you would take your webbing and you would put the top raw end here for one, another raw end down at this marking and do the same on the other side and just base them in place. So now for our connectors, I've drawn a line down the center of our two connector pieces and I am using some double-sided tape to help secure the long edges of these when I fold them down into that center line like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and I am going to top stitch both of these with a eighth of an inch seam allowance. You can see I am chain stitching them. This is so I can uh, not waste thread. I will cut them apart after. Okay, so now that we have those done, I am going to take some double-sided tape outside of where we'll be stitching, about, oh, three quarters of an inch or so up from one of the short ends. Then I'm gonna take my D-rings And I'm going to put the straight side against the wrong side of my connector and fold both sides into each other, the short sides, securing with the double-sided tape. And then I'm taking another little piece of double-sided tape, making sure it stays outside of where I'll be stitching. And then with my side panel, I'm going to take them and find my top and bottom centers. I like to put little snips in them just so they don't disappear. And from the top, I'm measuring down one inch centered, and that is where I am going to stick down my crossbody connector piece like so. Now once that's done, from the folded side, top side where our hardware is, I'm going to measure down three quarters of an inch, and that's going to give me a guideline as to where I am going to stitch. So again, I'm pulling my threads long because I do not want to have that uh, back stitch. I want to have a seamless line. And then I'm following my 1 8th of an inch uh, stitch line that I had uh, done previously until I get to that drawn line. And then I'm going to pull that starting thread through to the back, work my way across that line I drew, back down uh, following that same 1 8th of an inch stitch line, and then ending in that same start hole. Hand cranking makes this easier, pulling my threads long, pulling that bobbin thread to pull that top thread through and then once again tying those off in three or four knots. You will do this exact same thing with the other side. Okay, so I went ahead and I added rivets backed with Decavilla Heavy just to secure those a little bit more. Now I'm taking my bottom piece and with the bottom of one of my sides, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch those together with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once that's done, you're going to push your seam towards the bottom panel and then top stitch it through the bottom panel into place. 
Once that is done, you're going to do the exact same thing with the other side panel and the other end of the bottom panel. So this is what we have here. Now I just want to mark my center of my bottom so I am matching up my sewn seams that we just did and on both sides just putting a small snip into where our centers are and then set that aside for now. Now for our zipper panel I like to cut my zipper just a little bit long put a wonder clip on the end so I can pull my uh, my uh, pulls out of the way. You are going to take some double-sided tape or clips if your machine doesn't like double-sided tape and put it on one of the long edges of our exterior zipper panel. Put this right sides together with our zipper tape. Clip it or stick it in place. Again, you can see my zipper's long with my pulls out of the way. It just makes it easier for uh, stitching so you don't have to move the pull. So. I strongly suggest you switch out to your zipper foot. This helps us get a really, really nice and even stitch along our zipper tape. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sew these together with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then you're going to finger press that panel nice and taut away from the zipper teeth and go ahead and top stitch through this. Now this is something that I do a little bit different than the pattern. If you want to follow the pattern you do not need to top stitch this. Just finger press it really good so it stays away from that panel. Go ahead and do the exact same thing with the other panel on the other side. Okay, so that is done. So now you can pull your zipper pulls into the center and trim off the excess zipper tape. And now we are going to form our gusset. So fold your D-rings out of the way. Match up the top of your side panels nice and centered with the zipper panel. Clip it in place. And then we're going to go ahead and sew this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then once you're done uh, stitching these together, you're going to um, press the seam down towards the side panel, and then we're gonna top stitch it in place through the side panel. We are going to do the exact same thing with the other two sides forming a loop. It is a little bit more awkward, especially when it comes to the top stitching part, but not hard at all. So clip the other side panel and the other side of the zipper panel together, stitch with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, just like we did with the first one. Okay, so now this is a little bit awkward, but completely doable. You're going to push that seam towards the, the side and top stitch through, making sure that the rest of the loop that we have created does not get stuck in our stitching. And that is our gusset done. All right, so I want to find the center of our zipper panel. So again, we're matching up that seam where we had attached them together and making a clip and I'm double checking that my bottom seams are still good. And if they aren't centered, like this one here is a little bit off, so I'm just reapplying my little snips and cutting away any excess thread. All right, so now we are gonna start forming our exterior. So on the bottom of our main panels, we want to put in little 3 eighths of an inch squares on the bottom of both. Make sure you cut away any excess foam so you're not going to end up missing um, any of your raw edges. Okay, so now you also want to make sure you find the center top and bottom of your main panels. Okay, so now you are going to take your main panel and the bottom of your gusset right sides together and you're going to match up that center point. 
And then you are going to sew these together between those three eighths of an inch boxes that we had previously drawn on the main panel, not going past those three eighths of an inch boxes. Okay, you can see I've done that here. Now you're gonna flip it out like so, and you're gonna take your other main panel, put it right sides together, line it up with the other side of that bottom, matching that center, and doing the exact same thing again, sewing between the 3 eighths of an inch. And this is what it should look like. So now we wanna make it so our gusset is gonna be able to turn that corner good. So just in the gusset piece, just before um, our 3 eighths of an inch box so just inside that seam only on the gusset you do not want to be cutting your main panel you're just going to put in a little maybe quarter of an inch snip or so on all four of those seams and what this is going to do it's going to help spread that fabric around that corner so it will fit seamlessly Okay, so then you're going to take one side of the gusset after you've undone your zipper, trust me, that'll make it easier. Match up your zipper panel uh, center and the center top of your one of your main panels. And then start clipping the raw edges all the way around. Now here's where those snips help and you're going to see that we're going to look like we have a little triangle in that corner. That is exactly what we want and you're going to see how it's going to fit just perfectly around there and it's going to give us a nice sharp point once this bag is done right at those corners. Okay, so once that's done, you're going to go ahead to your machine and sew all the way around there with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance starting and stopping at those 3 eighths of an inch boxes. Again, making sure that you are not accidentally sewing through your other main panel that's kind of hanging out there. Now I'm doing this with my gusset side down. I found this to be the easiest for me. So just make sure everything is laying flat and your other part of your gusset where the zipper is, isn't flipping up and getting caught in that stitching. Just be very aware of how your fabric is laying and that you are only stitching through what you want to be stitching. and just to that 3 eighths of an inch box, not further. Okay, so then just kind of feel around and make sure everything was caught, which it was, and then go ahead and do the exact same thing with the other side of the bag. Okay, so I'm just feeling to make sure I have no holes in these corners, we're good, so I'm gonna turn this right side out. And as I poke out these corners, look how perfect they are. Nice and pointy like we want them to be. And then the rest of the bag has just a wonderful curvy shape. So finger press out these seams. And then you can go ahead and you can put this aside for now while we work on the lining. Okay, so the lining is pretty fast. I already went ahead and did my slip pocket, my zipper pocket. Those classes are down below in the description. Just make sure that you close off the bottom of your zipper pocket, unlike my other tutorials, which leaves them open. Okay, so you wanna find the top and the bottom centers of both of our main lining pieces. You're gonna go ahead and do the sides with the bottoms exactly like we did with the exterior pieces, except for we're going to sew them with a half inch seam allowance rather than a 3 8 So this is what we have here. Now for a zipper panel, on the inside of one of them, you wanna fold it in 5 8 of an inch and line up those raw edges with our uh, side pieces. And do the same with the other one, fold in 5 8 of an inch and line it up with the side here. So you got these two folded center in, this is for our drop-in lining. 
with those five eighths, it should be the same width as our gusset. And then you go ahead and sew across this with a half inch seam allowance. You will do the exact same thing with the other side. Okay, so here we go. So you see we have an opening here. Now I have these 5 eighths of an inch kind of folded in. I'm going to secure these with some double-sided tape, making sure they are outside of the seam allowance where we'll be stitching, which will be an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch-ish away from that folded side. This will just help ensure that these stay where they need to be when we go to do our drop-in lining. I also gave mine a really good press on the iron and that seemed to help keep things in place as well. All right, so this is what we have. Again, find the centers of the top of our zipper lining zipper panel and the bottom on both sides. Now our exterior pieces are going together in the exact same fashion that our uh, exterior did for our interior. The only difference is we're doing 5 8 of an inch boxes and sewing with 5 8 of an inch seam allowances. So once you have that all done on both sides, you can go ahead and trim down those seam allowances to about a quarter of an inch or so on both sides. All right. So I went ahead, I am using double-sided tape and clips um, to hold this in place. So I put some double-sided tape along my folded edges of my lining and now I'm putting my lining inside my bag, wrong sides together. This is the tough part. Take it slow and put things where they need to be and you will be okay. So I'm gonna start with one side, removing my double-sided tape and I'm marking up the side seams um, of my lining and my exterior and sticking it in place and then that folded edge of the lining I am lining it right up with the stitching from when I attach my zipper to the exterior gusset so putting it so it's covering up that stitching so I know that it will be caught when we go to stitch these together so as well as the double-sided tape I am also using some clips again do not use the double-sided tape if your machine cannot handle the stickiness of it I am an on an industrial, so I don't have any issues with it, but I don't necessarily trust my double-sided tape to hold it in place during this curvy part, so I am going to do double duty, and I'm going to use um, clips as well as that. All right, so now I'm at my cylinder arm. This is a little bit different than how it's done in the pattern. In the pattern, if you are on a flatbed machine, please do it so uh, you, as the pattern says, if you have a free arm or a cylinder arm, you can do it just like me. So once again, I do this just slightly different than the pattern. Um, I am stitching these together an eighth of an inch away from my eighth of an inch top stitch from when I originally did my zipper panel and I am slowly working myself all the way around. Take this slow. This is not easy but is it as well worth the effort, I promise you. Once you're all done this, just clip on that crossbody strap and then we're done.
that's it, that's all. Did you all survive doing that drop-in lining? I can tell you drop-in linings are not my favorite thing to do, but as I've been doing more and more tutorials for Bethany, I am really starting to actually master it. It just shows that practice makes perfect. Many of the Catsiopeia patterns are done as a drop-in lining, and I've been making quite a few of them lately, and I'm finally to the point where it's really not all that bad. So again, practice makes perfect. It'll come along eventually, and you may find it super easy to do drop-in lining too. Everybody has different types of um, strengths and weaknesses. I can tell you a drop-in lining with a zipper top drop-in lining was my weakness, but I have to thank Katsiopeia because I'm finally getting more and more comfortable with it, and I'm not so scared of them anymore. Anyways, if you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. And if you'd like to support my channel further, you can join my membership site, Sew Along Classes, that we have twice a week. Or you can even buy me a coffee. Subscribing is perfectly good enough as well. Anyways, I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye!